And uh, Owen Corrie from Erin Travel Magazine is on the line too. Good morning, Owen. Good morning, Claire. Going back to this plan then that's going to be presented to government today by the Dublin Airport Authority, what are you hearing might be in there? Well, there's a couple of, you know, there'll be uh, a lot of, there'll probably be a demand side to the plan as well. They'll probably look for a couple of things back from the government that could ease things. Um, They're working, the the airport is devising this plan in a very heavily regulated environment with the uh, Commission, they're subject to the Commission of Aviation Regulation in terms of all their uh, structures, their queuing lengths, sort of thing is monitored by them. Uh, It's obviously a very heavily unionised environment. They have let 248 uh, security staff, um, given them redundancy packages during COVID, they cannot be re-employed for a period of time under the terms of that packaging. And they will be pre- presumably explaining that uh, what has been said publicly by some of the DA spokespeople, that Sunday was caused by an, un- an, un- an unexpected number of absences on early in the morning uh, they lost control of the queues and never got them back. They would say that while they're built for for very busy weekends, the peak day for the airport is going to be June the 24th. We've got a bank holiday weekend coming up that weekend and uh, the, or the weekend after and the coming weekend. So they will say they're, they're staffed up for it. It's just that uh, and they're so close. Uh, they're so full to capacity that a small thing can drive them over the edge. Yeah, and there's been so much discussion and debate about what went wrong over the weekend and previously when we had similar problems. But until they can agree, Owen, on what did go wrong, surely they can't have the plan to fix it. Well, what went wrong was uh, un- unexpected absences. Um, the uh, the impact of that was much was way greater than mm. anybody uh, in advance would have worked out. But I think we, that's we really were told what they're saying the, is the how can a small yesterday, problem develop into such a big one? The spokesperson yesterday said that that was one of the problems that they faced, but it wasn't the problem in its entirety because they are short staffed across the board. They're absolutely stretched to the end and everything, Claire, at the airport is stretched to the end. We've baggage hall problems. They were uh, they were really uh, highlighted on Saturday on social media and they're running on some media this morning. We have uh, airport services to the airlines problems to the extent that, for instance, we've uh, uh, one new route starting to Cairo four weekly on Friday and that was in question until quite recently because they weren't sure they would have the people to provide the staff a check in and at the gate. And we have a tour operator uh, really, really stretched with uh, passengers, with cancelled flights and passengers stranded. It's, it's uh, some of the airlines, British Airways, have reduced their entire summer schedule, including the Dublin flights. And uh, EasyJet cancelled 200 flights over the weekend. It didn't impact Dublin, it impacted Belfast. So every single aspect of the industry is under pressure, close, you know, close to full to capacity. And that's when um, a, a trigger event, as in Sunday morning, just drew, pushed everything over. As you say, it's a confluence of factors. There's also the safety audits that Dublin Airport failed in recent months and the enhanced security checking, which came in in January, which impacted and has impacted for a while. The question is that Dublin Airport knew a lot of these things were coming down the tracks. We've known, for instance, about enhanced vetting since last September. Uh, The airlines complained and said it was going to be very difficult, but uh, they put up with it in the end and Ryanair and Aer Lingus uh, got ready for the the serious impact on their operations that it would take. Dublin Airport seemed to have been caught by things that other parts of the industry uh, were geared up for. Mm-hmm. I mean, as you say, a lot of this was predictable. I know we had the staff absences over the weekend, uh, as we mentioned earlier. But you've got to be, if you're an organisation like the Dublin Airport Authority, you've got to be able to respond with flexibility to those problems when they pop up. Absolutely. If you're in the services industry, which they are, it doesn't matter if you're running a coffee shop or a cruise ship, telling customers that uh, somebody didn't show up for work and we, they all have to queue for four hours isn't acceptable. I think the anger uh, that we saw uh, from social media and from the political circle since then has probably, refle- it, it, uh, hopefully, um, it has reflected the degree of anger and the 
absolute anxiety. Something really bad happened on Sunday, Claire. The trust that Dublin Airport had built up since March, since the first incident in March. You can rely on us two and a half hours for short haul and three and a half hours in advance of a long haul flight. We w- you won't miss your flight. That trust was broken on Sunday. Very hard to get it back. The congestion that you were mentioning there was showing that uh, showing up on TV screens um, and early morning queues in Dublin Airport yesterday and today is purely due to the anxiety of passengers because it's a big deal to lose your holiday, especially if you've been waiting for three years and you've got a few uh, excited children in your hands. Absolutely. Now, um, is there an option for people who want to try to rebook their flights from a different airport? So say travel from Cork or Shannon or Donegal to try to avoid the queues. Can you do that? Will you be charged a switching fee? You're going to be charged a fee. Aer Lingus waived the fee on Sunday. That was specific to Sunday to passengers who either were missing their fl- had missed their flight or were uh, in danger of missing their flight. They were given a, they would pay the difference in the fare, but they wouldn't have to pay the fare change. That didn't apply, doesn't apply to flights going forward. That sort of flexibility is unusual from airlines. Now, if you're going to move your your fly to Dublin from another Irish airport, your options are very limited. Um, you, there are only two services to Dublin, that's far and far and from Donegal. The, there isn't a Cork or a Shannon to Dublin flight. There are opportunities for regional airports where there are shared destinations, the likes of the Heathrows. But what we've seen is the prices out of Shannon and Cork rise substantially um, and do higher even than Dublin, even in directions like New York and places like that in recent weeks. Huge opportunity for regional airports. Unfortunately, they and the number of destinations um, are just over 40 for Shannon and over just over 50 for Cork doesn't compare with the 200 plus out of Dublin and while going forward I think you know regional airports should be working uh, and saying do we need everybody do we need 32 million people going through one airport on the island or should it be mm-hmm. more evenly dispersed uh, that's not going to be a short term solution And look there are so many people now who are out of pocket over what happened at the weekend do you expect that we'll get any more detail today about the DAA's refund system for passengers. Very little to go on, uh, Claire. As you say, there is lots of precedent for when an airline uh, is actually quite tabulated what the compensation scheme is if anything goes wrong with an airline. And it's been around for 18 years. It's been through the courts, through the EU Commission directives. There is not the same um, regulations under uh, for airports. They are under the Commission of Aviation Regulation, but the Commission have, has said they have no real role in the refund process. What we're working on at the moment is an email. It's customercare at dublinairport.com and they say that during the course of the morning there will be a website uh, there will be a website uh, set of instructions. The people who are emailing that are getting back a form and being told to put in details of the flight they've missed and the vouched expenses. Uh, the Dublin Airport say they're doing this on a case-by-case basis. It's not something we've a precedent for, but there aren't that number. I mean, it does sound an awful lot between the 1,000 and 2,000 probably missed their flights. In the great scale of the way um, aviation faces uh, weather events or even a pile up on the M50 or something like that has caused more people to miss flights in the past. It's not that big uh, a, a drama for Dublin Airport to get through those refunds in a timely factor. They're yeah, talking about a couple of days. They're you, talking about resourcing yeah, the payment of them. But, but, but Owen, it's not that big compared, you, for instance, with the 25 yes. million people who had to be refunded by Ryanair you, during But COVID. you mentioned trust and broken trust and the people who are out of pocket now will be well within their rights to wonder, will they get all the money back that they are due back? I, I would imagine because the number isn't great, uh, maybe around uh, between the, uh, Dublin Airport says a thousand, some of the airlines says it's a bit more. But I do think that they should be able to process that level of, re, of, compla- of refunds without yeah. too much difficulty. And the, pro- the issue will be resourcing. Uh, resourcing everything in the airport is an issue, but I do think they will prioritise the resourcing okay. of the refund issue. Surely uh, we've got to think that there must be jobs uh, at the DAA, senior management jobs, under pressure now, Owen, because of all of this. 
Yeah, um, the CEO is departing. It's been fairly well publicised. He's departing in September. So, you know, the American solution where uh, somebody calls for heads and somebody usually fires, they don't resign, they fire somebody immediately below them. It won't, it would, it's a lot of th- that sort of uh, reaction. Um, we've, we've fired the guy who, who caused the problem. It's probably not going to happen in Dublin Airport. It isn't that culture. It's a different type of culture. We've seen it happen with other uh, aspects of Irish business, including one of our, our airlines in recent years. But I, that isn't the culture they've operated under. It'd be interesting if demands like that are made at the meeting, which is due to start in the next uh, uh, 12 or 14 minutes. Well, we'll keep tabs on that too. Owen, thanks very much. Owen Always Curry a great there pleasure, from uh, Air and Travel magazine.